and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary on Nantucket. If you haven't seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. I'm an attorney. I do nothing but elder law. Uh, I come to the island a lot now um, and do presentations at the Senior Center. Um, these shows, though, are not about elder law. They're really about the people and the, and the programs that you need to know about as a citizen here in Nantucket both the programs that exist and the programs that you'd like to see exist in the future. One of those major programs and things is Sherbourne Commons, which many of you have known about since its first in its inception as a nonprofit, and then it switched to a for-profit, and then it switched back to a nonprofit. Uh, and over the last couple of years now, the person who's been running all that has been Kevin Komek, who was kind enough to join me today. So thank you very much, Kevin, for uh, coming on. Thanks, it's a pleasure to be so here. It, and, and I know it's summertime, you know, but and we, so we're probably the only two people with suits here on the island. I noticed right. on the boat that I come over all, all year round, but the hardest part about coming over this time of year is I'm the only suit on the boat, you know, and you just, it's killing you, right? It really right. is, the, but the weather's absolutely beautiful. But the it? weather is like, it's just another, somebody said that, they said, you know, the weather, and with bad weather is bad weather every place, but good weather is always better on Nantucket. And absolutely. It's, yeah, absolutely. So Kevin, can, before we talk about Sherbin Commons, can you just talk about a little bit about who you are and how you got here, what you did before this, and all sure. that? Sure. All right. Well, thanks. Uh, Thank I uh, I've been in the senior services industry for close to thirty years. I'm yeah. a licensed nursing home administrator, and, and really spent the first twenty years or so as a nursing home administrator. Yeah. Um, I, I think nursing homes do great things. Um, proud of what they do and it's a, not an easy business. The, the, the folks that do the work at nursing homes really are, are angels. Really do. Nice job. Right. And, and, being, and, and being able to feel that way from the beginning about the importance of, of skilled nursing facilities ultimately, you know, if you really need them, it's okay. really important. Absolutely. Really. And, and they have a, a, they, there's a place for them and when people are ready to go to nursing homes, um, I think nursing homes do, do great things. Uh, I was fortunate enough about 10 years ago to yep. uh, go to work with a, an organization called Deaconess Abundant Life Communities. Deaconess Abundant Life Communities. And was that related to Deaconess for, to the to the mother to the hospital in, in Boston? Years and years ago it was. They split yep. about uh, late 1940s yep. and uh, yep. the, the, the nursing homes and, and housing went one way and the hospital went, went another. I see. Um, I joined the organization as I said about 10 years ago uh, first to open a campus on the Outer Cape and uh, ultimately for the last few years with them I was the chief operating officer and I oversaw five communities in the Outer Cape, when that was in, is that in Chatham? It was in Provincetown. In Provincetown. In Pro Provincetown. You were, that's the really Outer Cape. It was as so, far out as you could get. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yep. Um, and and what, what I really enjoyed and continue to enjoy about, yep. about uh, independent living and assisted living is the entire intent of uh, that kind of, of uh, housing for, for seniors is to keep people out of nursing homes. And the as goal I say, of the exercise. Uh, well, you, you know, know, as I say, when, when, when someone's ready to go to a nursing home, I think nursing homes do great things, but nobody really wants to go to a nursing home until they're ready to go. No, my clients, that's what they always say. I mean, I, I remember my mother. I started doing this work. My mother died in a nursing home in 1991, and I remember how hard it was because for years she had made my father promise on all, don't ever send me to a nursing home. Right. My father was still alive. It just killed him. Right. I mean, it liter literally. In my father, my father uh, uh, um, um, had a heart attack shortly before my mother died in the nursing home. He was just so. But but it was. It's really difficult for these folks, right? And 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 by the way, I just want to mention when I when I do presentations here at our island home, I have often said the best nursing home I have ever seen, in my opinion, is the island home. Because it has though even it's not fancy big chandeliers, you know, but it has these qualities about it that makes it feel like not the stereotype of what people think about, right? But even there, no one's you know telling me they're just dying to go right, right to the to the nursing home. I right? couldn't agree with you more. I, you know, I tell people all the yeah. time, you know, don't look up at the chandeliers when you walk into a nursing home. Look at Look at what the staff's doing at seven o'clock at night, and it, look uh, at what the staff's doing. And, and right. if they're smiling and they're caring for your for your mom or your or your loved one, then then you know it's a good place. Right. And, and and that's that's what I've heard about our own home as well is that the the, the staff is caring and yeah, it's, it's a hard place to work because it's a nursing home, but they they right. really care about the people that they care about. And I remember this year hearing that they actually have a they have a five stars from CMS, which you know, like a top rating. And you say to yourself, 
that our island home does, you know, but that it's for that reason. But go, go back to where you are. So, so it has to be available because there's a point at which there's the level of care that you need, of, of really medical type care that you need is really necessitates it. Well, and that's really but, the point. A yeah. nursing home is a medical model. And when you go to a nursing home, you know, the, the, it's, it's, it's a facility where, you know, you have to get your medications at a certain time, you eat dinner at a certain time, and, and, and everything is pretty much on a schedule because it's, it is a, it's a health care facility. It's a facility, right. Um, assisted living is home. It's a social model, and that was the entire idea when, when assisted living was born. And, and it's, it, as it's continued to grow, with independent living, it's, you know, how do we keep people even more independent? And by the way, you know, historically, I don't remember assisted living as like being, I don't remember any, like in the, like the, I want to say the 90s or the 80s. Is this really a recent phenomenon? The uh, late 80s is about the time that they really started to, to take off and, yeah. and, and folks continued to, to want to stay as independent as they could. And, and they, they, they started off as a very independent and social model. And as we've moved along, people with more and more needs continue to go to assisted living because I think the industry has gotten better at figuring out how to you know, kind of attack those one or two things that are keeping people from being able to stay at home on their own. I see, and if you, I see. And if you attack those one or two things, then people can pretty much do what they were doing before. For some people, they can't drive anymore. And so if, if right. we can, you know, if, if, if they can figure out you know, to, to work with us and we can show them, uh, you know, how our transportation can help them get their errands done, Everything else, they can still make decisions on and still be independent. And, it's and, and I'm glad you mentioned that one. I was talking to a person, not around here, but I was talking to a person in Sudbury yesterday, and she's so, she's 94, and so much wants to get her license back. Now, she's got some problems, right. you know? But the problem is, from her perspective, she's just trapped, you right. know? She's just trapped. And so, no, even though her, her, her driving may really be marginal, right? and maybe dangerous to some extent, it to hurt. And I always, I always tell people, you know, it, it's fine for you to say you're willing to take your own, you risk your own, yourself, but you know, you're gonna hurt somebody right. and you're never gonna forgive yourself. Absolutely. Right? But still, if you're, if, you're, if, you're, if you're trapped, if you're in a place where you can't walk to stuff, what else are you gonna do? You know? and, they, and they truly are trapped. I, I, you right. know, they, if, if you talk to any of the experts and you, and you talk to, to the folks that are affected by aging, it is the isolation that, that really is, is the most difficult thing to overcome and because they are trapped. If they can't right. get out to the store, if they can't get to the eye doctors, if they can't pick up their medications, they're in trouble. And, and that usually leads to ending up at the hospital or ending up in a nursing home if there isn't an intervention ahead of time. Right, because somebody falls down. Correct. You know, something, Correct. something happens at home. Absolutely. Or, or I see this with couples, they'll be staying in their home. And, and like my friends Frank and Mary, everybody wants to die and be buried in the backyard. And the longer you've been in the home, the less you want to leave that home. Right, right? absolutely. Because you know that that home, you're always going to know where the bathroom is. Right. right? You're always going to know where the salt and pepper is. And so you, you kind of don't leave. So couples will tend to be, they'll just stay at home all the time. Right, right. Right? Well, you kind know, of you, close, the, close the blinds. And, right? right. You bring up a good point. You know, one of the, and, and I think that that's one of the reasons why in, in our industry, in the assisted living, independent living industry, people have been encouraged to, to move at, a, at an earlier date because it gives them time to put down roots, and then it's home. And then it's home already. It isn't an emergency. That's an interesting point. You That's know, if you wait until, until you need an institution, yeah. then you're going, in, going someplace and it's not home. If I, I had a gentleman who was a relatively young, he was a, in his late 50s, an attorney, yeah. who said to me, I, I want to move when I, where I can put roots down. So as I age, I'm home. So you're home, and you know, the, you know, you know the, all the players, and right. you kind of, you know the, kind of the, so, so now tell me about, tell me about Sherburn Commons. You, you know, you've been there for a while. Mm -hmm. Once again, I just had that kind of very brief history. When I first started coming here, oh, so this was maybe eight or nine years ago, and I knew your, your predecessor, who was a, a local guy, mm -hmm. right, who had just been here for, for a long time, right? Yes. And he talked to me about some of the history, right? But for, so from your perspective coming in, kind of where, where was it, where is it, Sure. And then, you know, we've talked a little bit beforehand about you're giving me a sense from your own perspective, your kind of a unique perspective, where is it going and what's its role in the community both today and five years from now, ten years from now? Sure, good question. Yeah. You know, I, when I, I actually met our board president, David Worth, about five years ago mm -hmm. uh, when the current board had, had just taken over Sherburn Commons and, and, and um, had, was trying to figure out, you know, how, how can we make this a going concern? Yeah. Not, not just in the short term, but how can we make it a going concern for 30 years, 40 years, 50 years? Yeah. 
and we he met me because we had done something very similar out in Provincetown where we had offered an ownership model and, and, and was able to get more equity into the community so that it was never in financial trouble again. And that truly was their first kind of focus. Make sure we're taking care of the folks that, that are there, but very quickly after that, how do we make sure that we can continue to do that financially and stay, you know, stay in business? Right. right. Um, so about five years ago, as they formed, the, the first thing they did was how to put a financial structure in place. Um, the momentum started then. David uh, formed a, a board of six people who, when I first met each of them, they all said to me, we want, we want this to be here for the long haul. We want to be able to step down from the board someday and say, you know, 20 years from now, 30 they years did from it. And people, you know, Well, not necessarily that but, they but, did it. But, but that's not a bad thing, that, well, that people stepped up. You know, you want to feel like. Sure, and I think they're very yeah. proud of that fact. Yeah. But I think even more it's important. It's a nonprofit, so it's a legacy thing. It's not a, you know, they're not pocketing anything here. Absolutely, right? absolutely. And, and even more importantly to them, they wanted to make sure that it was here for the next generation of folks that came to, to right. Nantucket. And, and, I, and I think that we are at that point now. It feels good to be stable. We, uh, we actually refinanced the community back at the beginning of the year. This, at the beginning of this year? With the local bank and uh, have very little debt on the community now thanks to you know, some good operations that, yeah. that started four or five years ago and, and continue now. We, we stay relatively full. We have two open apartments today, which is about as many as we, we run now. So, so for a second, describe to folks what's there. Because sure. I think one of, the, so one, of the, one of the themes of today yep is to get every single person who lives here and has driven by it to actually go in. Sure. To actually go in. And, and I think, you know, your point is well taken about you may want to move in before you really need some of the services that are there. But one of the things I always tell my folks is you, you, you find your assisted living while you're still at home, right, so that if there's an emergency, it's all set. So that you're not in the situation where you're going to the hospital and the hospital because of the nature of their pay structure, at the d moment you're there, they're trying to figure out how to get you out. Absolutely. You know, and there, so there's a tremendous pressure there, and if you're there because you had some problems, you fell, something happened, or maybe there's no one at home, right? Home may not be an option to discharge you. Right. What are they gonna think of? Nursing home. That's where they, you know, that, and, 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 and if you can give them, at that point, an alternative, oh no, you know, I've been to Sherman Commons, I like it, we, you know, everything is be good there, then that can be an option. You're right? absolutely right. And, and I think, you know, as an attorney, I, I'm sure you've spoken to people your entire professional career about making sure that your documents are in place. And, 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 and about this. And about what this I was going to say, yeah. that should be a, a, just one of the boxes that gets checked off. We, where would we move to? Um, if you know, there were kind of trouble for the next step, or even right. before this, I, you right. know, I, I, you're saying before that, and I'm saying, and, that, and that's really good planning. But I'm just saying, from a lawyer's perspective, I want to know if there's trouble. Right. You figured it out. You're not going to the place you don't want to go. Right. Correct. Unless you really have to go. Absolutely right. correct. Right. You know, one of the things that that we've done, and 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 you know, it's it's, it's been a necessity for a lot of organizations uh, on Nantucket. You know, th yeah. There isn't a critical mass of of any population, to, no matter what your, your business is. Right. And so, you know, when the, when the community opened up, it was a traditional assisted living. However, there, there isn't necessarily... When it originally opened. Yeah. Correct. There isn't necessarily enough traditional assisted living type folks. And one of the things I think that the board was very thoughtful about was, so how do we kind of widen the, 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 the group of people that would be interested that in coming be a, to Sherman Commons. And before you talk about that, I, I, I distracted myself, right? I, I'm, I'm bad about That's that. That's okay. Right? So what's there? Tell me, you, there's that, you, people would drive by or look, kind of look down the driveway. Sure. Right? And you see some, some individual structures yep. and you see a large structure. Sure. So what's, what is that? So that's exactly where I was going. So we, oh, we, 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 have, 20, uh, we have 20 independent living cottages. Yeah. Um, two and three bedroom cottages, fairly good sized cottages, anywhere from about 1,800 square feet to about 2,200 square feet. Yeah, that's a Nantucket version of a cottage. That's yeah. not a real little cottage. It right? is funny when you, when you tell somebody on the phone or you email them and call it a cottage and then they show up and say, that's not a cottage. Right. <laughs> um, right. But we have 20, 20 homes mm -hmm. uh, and then we have in the main building, we have 32 uh, apartments, all I certified see. as assisted living. 
However, the homes as well as the apartments. Uh, just no, the, the apartments. The apartments the, the, are the only ones that are certified for assisted living. I see. However, one of the things. And by certified, that's licensed by the state, by the executive office of something. Executive right? office of elder affairs. Of elder affairs. Of who okay. we just had our survey and did quite well, which yes. was great. So we yes. got our kind of good housekeeping seal of approval taken care of that's for the good. next couple that's of years, good. which was great. We were really proud of that and proud of the staff for the, the job they did around that. However, uh, uh, so anyway, so there's 32 of them. But we only have today eight people that are considered assisted living. In the, in the building that could house 32. Correct. What, one of the things, and, and again, as I say, I, I think it was, it was very smart on the, on the part of the board, was they said, you know, we want to get people to move in when they're still independent and keep them independent. Let's do those one or two things that'll keep them from falling down or keep yep. them from having to get in the car and get in an accident and, and those kind of things. Yep. And so we call that living with assistance. And so we have folks in their late 50s who, you know, their assistance is, you know, can, I, can you do a dinner party for us or, you know, can you, uh, can you pick up some stuff at the grocery store for us or those kind of things. I see. You know, kind of a concierge type service. As opposed to the traditional definition of assisted living, which was assisting people with the activities of daily, C correct. the so-called activities of daily living. People that literally couldn't, couldn't maybe eat them by themselves or couldn't walk by themselves. I see. So that's a... Absolutely. That's a very different kind of model. Yeah, and, and, and we probably have um, 20 folks that still work either part or full time. So they get in their car and go off to work in the morning. But they've yeah. already you know, come in and started to take advantage of some of those services. And what Because what they don't want those hassles. Well, they don't want those hassles. And, right. and, and as they age, it keeps them independent longer. Yeah. Uh, and it, it also, quite frankly, is just more um, economical. You know, when you when you get to assisted living, then there's there's certain levels of service that you that you're required to take from the EOA, yep. EOEA, Executive uh, Office of Elder Affairs. Correct. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, uh, what what we offer is 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 a base level of services where you just get your dining and your housekeeping and utilities. When I say just, there's still a lot of services, but you don't get those healthcare or, or assistance with daily living type services unless I you see. need them. I see. Um, and so we, uh, we and, all, and by the way, you just mentioned food. So does, does each of these of those apartment units have a have a kitchen? They all have a kitchen. So you can do, you can do a you can eat prepare your own meal if you want to. Absolutely. In, fa in fact, I would say that the, that the folks that live in, in the larger ones um, probably half the time cook their meals. They have good-sized kitchens and they still enjoy cooking. We you know, we also have uh, culinary clubs and, and those kind of things yeah, oh, which people great. take advantage of so as well. So, and, and so as people need services, they, yeah. can, they can kind of order off a menu um, and if they don't need them, then they, you know, they, then they don't take those, those right. services as well. And, and so today, of those 32 apartment units that you have, how many of them have got people in them? Uh, 30. Well, that's pretty high. It is, a, a, high. but we were actually full through most of last year. We had a little bit of yeah. dip in the down three or four in the in, over the winter, and then back yeah. up again. So, uh, and by the way, does does it change in the summer? Are any of those folks folks who literally are living someplace else, but then they're coming from this for the summer and have decided while they're here they don't want to be cooking and doing all this stuff, and so they'd rather be kind of safe and be with you guys? Absolutely. We have, we have uh, probably seven or eight people that spend time in Florida or someplace, someplace else warm in the wintertime and, I and see. come back uh, this I time see. of the year. And, and, and so for them, for example, we do you know, more like uh, assistance taking care of the homes in the wintertime. We, we, uh, oh. or, or caretakers. We have yep. you know, one person, we you know, make sure that the, the car gets started every yep. week and that yep. the battery's still alive. We do walkthroughs and, and those kind of things for, for, for her house and make sure that... So that's everything. great. That's great. So, you, so the person can feel really safe here, but also feel really safe in their way. Absolutely. So, and, and, t and then tell me about the 20, the, the, uh, the 20 houses. Well, what 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 because it it seems to me I re, well I remember um, remember several years ago uh, having discussions about so maybe th those were going to be separately owned houses when you and you and you but you mentioned their cottages are those structured as are any of those owned by folks? Well, actually, very good point. And and and, and as I say, when the board was trying to figure out how to make this a going concern for yeah. the long term, yeah. you know, how could we do that? So we actually made the community a condominium community. And have allowed a few people to buy the cottages, I so see. we've sold a few, and uh, um, so we have a we have an ownership model or a uh, long-term rental model for the cottages. 
So if people awesome. are interested in, in purchasing condominium, they can order, they can purchase one of the uh, one of the cottages. They can buy one, or they can. When you say long-term rental, you can do like a multi-year rent, or a, you can. Well, basically, the way the the, the rentals yeah. work uh, on our community is you would sign a, a uh, residency agreement, yeah. which is a is initially a, a one year lease, but it continues to renew every year. And as long as you want to stay there, you're welcome to stay. And and uh, I get and and are and do those people are those people entitled to or take it? Do they take advantage of any any of the services that are offered in the main? Building? Absolutely, and again, you know, back to the flexibility point. We, we, yeah. for a lot of those folks that are working, they like the fact that they can call ahead and and uh, they can do takeout. So they'll come and they'll they'll say, look, I'm not going to be out till six thirty, seven o'clock, and I what's what what's the special on the menu tonight? Right. And they'll get a, order. Oh, a couple, they can take out from there. Yeah, they'll come and they'll they'll, they'll pick up the takeout there, right. uh, or we'll deliver it. You know, again, we will do it. And so and, and so as a as a as a older person, I'm always. So do you have a bar? Is there a bar? Well, it's it's, uh, it's uh, maybe I'm not supposed to ask. Uh, no, on, absolutely, on, good on, question. On we we actually allow people to to, to bring your own. So it's to BYOB. Yes. Yeah. So it's 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 a little bit easier. You don't have to have a liquor license, right. and, and right. it's also cheaper for folks to bring their so, own. So. so this is really exciting. So so it's as you as you say, you, it seems like you've achieved. You know, one of the basic goals was to which was to get yourself to a platform from which you really can think about the future, as opposed to thinking about how we're going to survive to tomorrow. Correct. You know? So, so tell me about your sense of how the, the community, how you see Sherbin as part of the broader community in Nantucket, how you see it going into the future, and talk to me a little bit about money, sure. about, 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 how, about you know, what kinds of costs you have, and, and for people who don't have those kinds of means, right, how you think that that can be addressed in the future, because obviously that you know, the, you're, you're rich or poor, right, you're, you're, we're all going to be aging before and trying to figure this stuff out before we die. Right. So, uh, great question, and and, and I actually yeah. give me a, a second to be able to, to to uh, speak a little bit about our board as well. As I, you yeah. know, as I mentioned a couple of times, I, I think that the entire focus was sustainability and and and, and stable uh, a stable uh, community. We've achieved that, I think, and what what uh, we've started to do this year is is actually grow our board a little. We've 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 added three new board members. Mm -hmm. And have at the beginning of the year started our, our really first strategic planning. So the board has kind of gone from that necessity to to be into operations and said, you know, now we can start to think about what other things can we bring to the island because right. the you, you, you're absolutely right. There are there are folks that can't necessarily live at Sherburn Commons or don't necessarily want to live at Sherburn Commons. They still want to yep. stay in the home that they've they've owned in Nantucket for a long time. And and I do think the the skill set and the and the uh, resources that we bring to the to the island can be spread out to the island, and that's some of the things that we've talked about over our, you know the beginnings of our st strategic planning. Yeah, um, affordability is a big issue. You know, assisted living is not inexpensive. You know, it, 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 uh, the the base uh, residency agreement uh, is you know close to five thousand dollars to start. Although you know, I, I think. Although, by the way, you know, so I do. I do work in a lot of places. That's not a high. That's it, not a high tab. Well, that's where I was going go with that. Yeah. You know, the, the reality is, when I sit down with folks, a lot of times what I say to them is, you know, when you start to add it up, you, you, it might not add up to where you think it adds up at the beginning. But two months after you're here, you're going to come back to me and say, now I know why this is worth it because there's basically so many things that are that are taken care of when you live in a community like uh, like Sherburn Commons. Right. And I think you're absolutely right. We are. When you compare our, our, our rates to assisted living uh, in, in the state of Massachusetts, we're 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 a really pretty darn good deal. I'm, I am commonly hearing numbers close to eight thousand, yeah, eight thousand, nine thousand a month on the island. Once again, you get the big chandelier and blah blah blah. But these are of course all for profits. Right. You know, right. I think you must be. What percentage of of the assisted living in Massachusetts would you say are nonprofit versus for profit? Because no, my, my anecdotally, I would look at it would look like about ten percent from the. I, I was going to say fifteen to twenty percent, I, yeah. and, I, and I think the for profits are really getting into the business, but they're right. you know they're, they're they're all about efficiency and and right. uh, different whole it's, different experience. Yeah, and, and they do experience. they do a good job. My, my mom's in a for profit assisted living, and uh, yeah. they do a wonderful job. But it's it really is about you know how fast can they get in and get out with the right. services. That so I didn't mean to drift, but so go back to back to affordability. But so there's so you figure your your price is about. Now about five thousand dollars a month to, to start. That yeah. would be that would yeah. be the base. Understood. So so for folks who will not be able to afford that, right? right where do, where how do you how do you think as a as a community that Nantucket should be addressing that? 
Well, I, I think we need to up. look as to, you know, what are they doing in other places? You know, I, I, one of the things that really attracted me to come here was I think Nantucket can be an incubator for a lot of different things. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. And, and, I, I, and not only could we be an incubator, I also think we have the, the organizations and the people that run organizations here that, that really have the right attitude and want people, want us to do a good job for our seniors. Um, so I, I, you know, I think it's really important that we kind of get together and try to figure this out. But when you look at the, when you look off island, what what a lot of folks have gone to is what's called home and community based services. Home and community based services. And really, what that is is bringing means right. bringing yeah. services like we provide at Urban Commons to the people in their homes. And and I would contend that the most important part of that process is the planning. You know, if you wait until somebody needs X, Y, or Z, it, it, it's just too hard to, to say, how do I get somebody to do this? Or how do I get right. somebody to do that? Right, right. It is, it, you know, it's, it, for a lot of people, they you know, think about it as the, as the case manager. But I, I, I've always thought it's more of a service manager. It's somebody that's coordinating the things that if you take care of those, they don't need the medical case manager. So what do you think is the role of Sherburn Commons in dealing with those issues? Well, I, you know, I, I think we need to be one of the players. Uh, yeah. I, I do think the coordination is probably something we do as well, if not better than anybody else, because that's what we do in a, in, in a, in a, on a micro scale. Right. Uh, so I and think you're there all the time. So, so in, for, from, from the perspective of Sherburn Commons being a kind of a leader of that, right. it's for you, it's, it's almost a value added, isn't it, right? Because you're otherwise going to be there. You've got staff there, you've got other things going on. Well, that's a really good point. It, it, yeah. it would help us as well. Because although you know we're somewhat large, to, when you look at us on, on Nantucket, we're yeah. not that big from a perspective of our type of organization. Right. So as I said earlier, we have eight assisted living folks right now. So we have staffing for eight people. If we have two people that need additional services for a short period of time, maybe they had a hip replacement or maybe something else where they need some staff for a short period of time, we need to ramp up for those staff. Right. And then you know, right. maybe after three, three weeks or four weeks, they don't need that anymore. And then we have to ramp back down again. If we had areas where we could send those people when they, we didn't have the demand, it would, allow, it would allow us to keep more people available for us. And we, we could react quicker. That's really interesting. Yeah. That's really interesting. So it really would, it would benefit you in that you know that you have that kind of greater capacity to deal with these kind of bumps. And at right. the same time, it ends up with just more capacity island wide and you end up having folks that are really well trained because they're folks that have been dealing with it right in your setting right, right? and so the, in, in, in i found so much of what, what the thing about being the kinds of home care or care that people need it isn't like you're not looking for this is, isn't i want to say it's not rocket science you know but you're not looking for phds right to do, you're looking for people who've got compassion right and who have um who are willing to learn from experience and, and people who can share their experiences so you get better and better at that. Right, and, and I think a yeah. critical point there is it's home and community-based services, not home and community-based care. Right. And right, so, right. and really what's needed is, is, is are universal workers. So people that can provide some of the ADL assistance, right. but it might be, you know, driving to pick up things at the grocery store, or maybe mowing right. the lawn, or maybe... Universal assistance, that's a nice term. And, and, really I, nice and term. I also think that, that you know, Sherburn Commons would not necessarily be the provider of all the, the people or the services. I, and, and, and I think that's where, I've gone to a lot of meetings with, you know, listen to folks, and, and there's a lot of people that are doing great stuff, a lot of organizations. And it's, you know, how do you make sure that when Sherburn Commons needs that, we know where to go, and right. how do we know when, when, when another organization needs some help with something else that we could provide that they know to come to us. Because everybody's talking. Right. Because everybody's talking. And, and I which, think, which is the reason why, I, I mean to cut you off, but I okay. think which is the reason why when you get back to Nantucket as being an incubator for other places, I, I see that so often back on the mainland that you've got all these overlapping services by virtue of the fact that they're not an island and therefore Correct. It, it, it isn't as clean so that you can really test these things here and make them work here in a way that could really be applicable in a lot of places. Well, and, you know, my hope is that you find, you know, obviously there's a lot of these services that, that are not really a good financial deal for right. an organization. And so I think on the island, if you could get groups that work together so that you could share the losses as well as the gains, as well as the gains. so that everybody could survive, you know, the, the, the right. problem when you're on the mainland is when you find those two or three services where there's a good margin, 
Then the for-profit is going to come in and say, and well, we'll them, do that. And eat them know? up. That's and, right. You know, we'll, we'll leave the, 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 the difficult parts of the, the not-for-profits who, you know, like Sherburn and like so many other not-for-profits on the, on the island that say, you know, that's our mission. We, we do that stuff. But you have to have a margin to be able to do the things you lose money on. That, right. And, right. And I think you, that... The fact that you're a non-profit doesn't mean you're a loss. It can't be a loss. Nobody can be a loss for very long. Correct. They can be a non-profit, right? Right. And so I think that there's a real opportunity because, you know, we have the, the big moat around us to, right. to say, well, you know, if we find a couple of those that make a few dollars that we can use to, to provide the services that yep. don't make any money. And I, and I do think that there's a number of players on the island that, that are willing be to very be part of that. Well, listen... This has been terrific. I think I think for a lot of folks who had, hadn't met you before, right, they have a sense of who you are. For folks who have driven by a thousand times, they have a sense of what's going on in that place. And so I hope you've enjoyed this presentation and that now you have a better understanding of Sherbin Commons. You should go visit it. You should go meet Kevin so that if there is an emergency, you'll know where to go. And, and so that you might want to even kind of consider going there even now and living in what sounds like a great community. Thank you very much for joining us, and I look forward to seeing you on the uh, next installment of Frank and Mary on Nantucket. Thank you very much.